Hello everyone and welcome to another Marvel Crisis Protocol themed unboxing as today we look at the very desperate CP107 and CP152 releases for the game even though thematically they go together. It is Apocalypse and also Angel with his Archangel form as well and I am able to get these courtesy of my channel sponsor and some store credit I have with them so thank you to them. Uh, I will hastily add that it is not their fault that El Sabiner's box is in this condition. That one's entirely on FedEx. I've ordered a lot of stuff from my channel sponsor both before and after and since they became a channel sponsor and they take great care with their packaging but the outer box, uh, I, I wish I could show you, it looks like someone kicked it down the stairs. Uh, most likely just something heavier than it was placed on it. Unfortunately smushing it right here. I'm hoping the interior is fine, we'll certainly see because we're unboxing it today, but I just want to make it very clear, they take care, my channel sponsor, uh, when they send stuff out. This is purely on FedEx, unfortunately. But anyway, we're going to be opening these today, and if you want to check out my channel sponsor, they carry Marvel Crisis Protocol, basically everything I cover on the channel and more, and board games. Uh, if you go via the affiliate link that's in the description of basically every video and pick out something for yourself. I get compensated as well which helps support the channel so thank you in advance if you do decide to have a look around and with that we're going to start with the big one today because I really like Apocalypse so I want to take a look. So Apocalypse he comes in a I guess you could say a Thanos size box even though he has no throne he does have a unique base and for some reason he comes with two statues I don't know why as far as I'm aware there's nothing related to his gameplay mechanics that use those they are purely decorative I might be wrong, we'll see as we open them I'm sure, but if you want El Sabiner's blurb, there it is. Uh, it, honestly it comes across to me a little bit like, we want to charge X for this model, but it's just one model so people might not buy it. Ah, just throw a couple of statues in there, that'll be fine. Alright, let's hope there is no damage to the interior here. Uh, it looks like it's been spared for the most part. Thank you Protective Cardboard for your protection. Okay, that looks fine. Yeah, that is fine. I thought it would be because the boxes are fairly bulky, so the sprue inside is largely untouched. We have our waste of space right here, since you have to look at the instructions online. But from what I understand, this is a pretty easy uh, assembly. And obviously the statue, they may just be one piece, I guess we'll see in a second. Let's open up. Oh, it's in there tight. Let's see how easily it comes out of here. So he actually doesn't come with a normal version of his base. You have to use the decorative one, which means he must be around or have been conceived around the time as uh, same time as Nemor and the other Black Panther who have decorative bases. Oh, the statue's arm bits. There is the statue sprue. It's, it's thematic scenery. Although he does have a scenery terrain kit. I wonder if that's to make you want more. Like this does, it feels like this exists for less good reasons. Apologies for the bing. I'll check what that is in a second. So, oh, he comes with assembly options. I can definitely tell that. You know, my dog is about to bark, so let's just do a quick break. <coughs> All right, the beast has settled, but uh, advance warning, my phone may go off one more time. As I was saying, there's clearly assembly options because he doesn't have a buzzsaw hand there, but there is a buzz hand saw option, which I like because he can manipulate his body into such things. I think there's a, is, I thought there was a cannon option as well, but maybe not. Oh yeah, wait, that's the cannon there, isn't it? So you've got three options. I kind of just like him standing aggressively. I'm, I don't know, I'm going to have to look at the assembly details. So that is your one option for the base. It is a cool thematic base though, but if you don't have this size of base sitting around spare, and I think the only spare one you'd have is from Dormammu, if you used his scenic base. He came with a bog standard one as well. So that would be your only option outside of third party. But he looks like an easy enough assembly to me. Nice and large. I'd say he's probably Thanos size. Yeah, that, that looks it to me based on just the, the chest height there. So thankfully all the sprue for him, despite the box being a little beat up, is fine. So I know I complain about how much recycling you get now with these and it's, it's so annoying that it's the cheaper option for them to do it this way. But because Apocalypse comes with so many cards, and they're covering every language that they cover for the game. Look at that chunk of just wasted paper that's going to have to get recycled. But we only need one card because, yeah, the statues don't have stats. So that's recycling. 
those must be related to the horsemen those will be the evolution tokens so we also have let's see that's english that's english that's english that's not english so yeah there's three cards and then the rest are recycling and then we have four cards because it's horsemen or maybe five because there's one explaining the mechanic yep and then all of this all of that is just such a waste it hurts. I know it's going into the recycling. I'm doing the right thing with it, but it still hurts. It's, ugh. So anyway, Apocalypse. He has the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. That's his mechanic. And it's a little complicated to say the least. But if you want to pause and read about the Horsemen, I don't really want to do like an ad hoc explanation. But who represents each Horseman? You have a selection of different choices. Um, you'll have to find the PDF if you want the full list or third party app but a bunch of different characters of different threat values can be like war etc and they can each do different things they earn evolution tokens which gives them benefits and that is how they work is it full art on the back oh it is it's cool i like that with archangel obviously being one of the main ones since after he lost his wings apocalypse gave them back at a price so that is how the horsemen work it is complicated and Good grief is a lot of extra gubbins to keep track of while you're using him, from what I understand. Because each horseman gets a unique power. So whoever you select to be war gets these abilities along with the passive all horsemen get right there. Again, fantastic art and they're on larger, they're on grunt sized cards. Death. They get a special trait. Again, excellent art. Hopefully in focus, there we go. Famine, of course. Uh, I don't really like that one, that one. And then Pestilence. That's pretty fun. Very old fashioned, actually. So, those, along with this, <laughs> those are your extra mechanics to keep track of, along with what you keep track of on Apocalypse's card that we'll see in a second. It is not a newbie friendly affiliation. Let's just put it simply. Now, you'll probably still do well enough, even if you do kind of forget to trigger these every possible chance, because they do have power costs, so it's not like you're always going to be having the power to do them. But keeping track of the horsemen of, insert name here, and the evolution tokens, which is what these are, that's important because it gives you free rerolls and stuff, from what I recall. So, that is important to remember, if nothing else, but yeah, definitely not something I'd class as newbie friendly. And speaking of things to remember, we have our three tactics cards, Survival, Immortal Servants, and the first one. Great art on all of them. That reminds me of the episode from the 90s cartoon, where <laughs> Cable goes back and tries to change history, I think. But, the first one. Apocalypse may spend four to play this card. Choose an ally character. The ally character is KO'd. Remove one activate token from Apocalypse. If the chosen character was injured, Apocalypse gains the stagger. So he just kills someone for another activation with Apocalypse. If they had already activated, he loses one of those extra actions. But if they're about to die anyway, hey, it's a free action or activation. That's pretty cool. <coughs> Immortal Servants. Apocalypse can spend three. Remove two damage from Apocalypse and each other allied character within two. It also gives them reactive. So I guess you have to pick. When he's attacking or defending at the end of the modified dice step, before the calculate success or failure, he can spend two and gets rerolls. I think that's going to be used for the heal more so than anything else, since he's not super tanky, I will say, for a sixth threat, but we'll get to that. Survival. During the power phase, an allied injured character may spend X power to play this card. X is equal to the allied character's threat value. The character that played this card drops all objective tokens it's holding until the end of the, the, of the first turn this round. That character cannot be damaged by enemy effects, use superpowers or reactive tactics, or they become immortal for a turn but they're not allowed to hold objectives. Another interesting card. And again, very, very, very cool art. I like that a lot. All right, time to look at the man himself in Sabanur. I keep on calling him El Sabanur, like he's Spanish. Anyway, he is a massive six threat. Seven health on his healthy side, four, four, four. And speaking of four, he is also size four, which means he's immune to most throws, not all, but most. Biomorphic Arsenal, his basic attack is 7 dice at range 3 and you can choose what element it is. And he gains equal, uh, power equal to the damage it does. On a wild it does cower before me. The target gains shock or root. If the target character already has those, then you can throw them away small. And he actually really likes uh, giving people stats effects, that's kind of his thing. His spender for 3 powers, 8 dice. Add 2 dice to this for each special condition the character has, yep there you go. 
So this is along with all those traits from those cards we were talking about that the horsemen get. This is the affiliation bonus. When this leadership is chosen, this character is assigned Master of the Horsemen. Then you assign Death, Famine, Pestilence, War to the Servants of the Apocalypse, which again you can get the which characters are eligible for which role online in the Tom Mass Games website. No characters may be assigned more than one Horseman card. So instead of an actual affiliation thing, it's giving four people that plus he gets to benefit from it as well. For four power, he can, during the power phase, select two characters within five. They drop objective tokens and are placed within one of him, which then would play into some of those tactics cards we just looked at. You will be remade through me for one. When an enemy character within five of this character would gain a special condition that it already has, you can use this for one power. They gain Bleed, Shock, Slow or Incinerate instead. They can only be affected by this once per turn. Again, status effects are his bag baby. Only the strong remain after an attack against this character is resolved. If this character suffered damage, it may remove one damage from itself. So the damage has to happen first, but then he kind of gets instant healing factor. Additionally, once per turn when this character would gain a special condition it's immune to, and he's immune to Bleed, Incinerate, Stun, he can either gain one power or heal one instead. Which is also really good, so you've kind of got to put him in places where... Oh, he'd be really good, it's because he's immune to incinerate, you could put him just on a portal, on the Dormammu portal's crisis card. Like, one, one of those crisis cards that force stats effects upon you. That's an interesting way to get an extra bit of healing or power generation. Because he is just generating his one power in the power phase, he doesn't have anything else. On his flip side, he gains one health, he goes to eight. The art is very fun. And he becomes immune to every special condition. Literally all of them. I believe those are the only two changes on this side. But that is a pretty potent change right there. Because that immediately means he absorbs all of them for extra power or health. Now he can definitely still get spiked down. Like for a six threat character this is definitely his biggest flaw. If he gets just a ridiculously lucky massive attack against him. There isn't really that much he can do. He's got one tactics card that can maybe heal two of himself. But yeah, he's if, if something spikes against him, that's his weakness. In general, he is pretty powerful. He is six threat though. So, and he's got all these horseman mechanics <laughs> to try and remember. If you do remember them though, have the cards handy obviously, it helps because you're gonna get some free rerolls and stuff from using the tokens that you generate from doing the horseman stuff. But yeah, he's, he's not uh, just, a blunt object you put on the table and smash into people's faces. He requires nuance and remembering a lot of additional rules. But, fun character. I like Apocalypse a lot. I loved him in the cartoon. And I was looking forward to getting my hands on this. So, it's fun that he's his own affiliation. I think the selection of horsemen, considering the characters available for the game, are quite good. And I'm looking forward to trying him. But for now, let's move on to Angel. So I don't have as much to say about Angel, I don't know him that well, I do remember him from the cartoon, but he is Warren Worthington III, born to a wealthy family, and then he became that. <laughs> the one true horseman, since he's the one I remember with the, the physical change, because he had to be remade because he lost his wings. I don't remember how he lost his wings, was he attacked by humans, was that what it was? Because he had, I think he has a, he, like he goes from being like the, the stalwart nice guy founding member of the X-Men, or one of the founding members to being quite bitter and evil. Like, it's not like his... I don't think he was mind-controlled. Does it say here, was he mind-controlled? He was betrayed by someone he trusted. There we go. And that left him wingless and broken. So, he, he had the vengeance in him, as we say. So, what base options does Angel and Archangel come with? It looks like they don't have a choice. It's one each. Oh, but it is the, it's the classic types. Okay, so, nothing fancy. Worth noting, though, they're the higher CP release number, so maybe they, they only did scenic bases for a little while, and then we're like, nah, we'll just use the old ones. Oh, they're very apt. They're stuck together. So this is Angel. My friend has already assembled these and didn't have any issues to speak of. Uh, no variant options, and they said that Angel is, or Archangel, is stuck in there pretty good. I haven't had feedback one way or the other regarding how wobbly Angel is, but it shouldn't be too bad. It looks like he's lodged in there by that foot. And his wings aren't that big or heavy, so it shouldn't be too bad. But he said for sure this one is fine despite the large metal wings. Like he's rooted into the pillar or whatever it is here pretty well. And the sprue is thankfully completely fine. 
nice detail on the wings too. I hope that's picking up there. So I was going to spare you me going through all the cards in a different language, but I'll just mention be careful because one of my English cards was on the front and the rest were on the back. So they were not placed together, so I almost missed it. There's four tactics cards and not three. So be careful with that. Death from Above, which I think is an old card with new art. Battlebound, Fallen, and Ultimate Sacrifice. Archangel may spend two to play this card at the start of an activation if he's overlapping a terrain feature. This turn, when Archangel attacks a character that's not overlapping a terrain feature or is overlapping a terrain feature of lesser size, then you get two added onto the attack. So he has the high ground, Anakin. Battlebound. When Archangel begins a move action within three of Psylocke, he can spend two. When Archangel ends his move, play Psylocke within one, and then she gets to perform a zero cost attack. So it's their kind of team up card against the Juggernaut for some reason. Fallen. When an allied angel would flip a stack card, oh yeah, this lets Angel become Archangel, which is actually a pretty cool card. Very thematic, he just gets reborn. You place him within one. Flip his stat card, and then you can play them. Only on his flip side, but still a pretty cool card. Good art too. Ultimate Sacrifice, oh is that him getting betrayed right there? <laughs> when an allied character within two of an allied angel is targeted by an enemy attack, angel can spend two to play this card. He becomes the target of the attack. If the angel is dazed or killed, remove up to three damage and all special conditions from the allied character. That's a pretty cool card, and obviously in combination with Fallen, you can kind of make that happen. It's kind of like Heroes for Hire, but you heal the person who was the original target, and then you get another character that replaces this one. And I presume, from what I vaguely remember, Archangel is just more aggressive than the Angel stat card that we'll see in a second, so him being on his injured side, and rather than Angel being on his injured side, is a boon for how much damage you're dealing. But when I talk about that, when we can just look at it, three threat for just Angel, Archangel is four threat, so you're also getting a four threat character on his injured side. Five health, three, 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 three threat, size two, medium move. He can do a flyby, which is a beam three, four dice. After this attack, after all attacks generated by this attack are resolved, place this character within one of the last one hit. Avenging Angel, three power for seven dice, physical with stun on a wild. You can also throw size 3 or less characters small. Airlift is very similar to, oh who has a, a move like that, was it Vulture? Although I think his was forcibly against an enemy. But this is bringing an ally with you for 2. Hostile Takeover for 2. During its activation when this character begins a move action within 2 of an enemy character, oh he has one as well. After this move is resolved, push the enemy character towards his character small. Yeah, so he actually has the Vulture version and then the allied version. He has healing factor 1 and, believe it or not, he can fly. On his flip side, which is the side you probably won't see much if you use that card, I believe absolutely nothing changes. He's kind of just a cheap and cheerful 3 threat with the power to transform into a, albeit day's side, 4 threat. So Archangel is a 4-3-4 as opposed to 3-3-3. Still medium move, same health, size 2, and that's the same. Razor Wing Strike, 5 dice basic attack. Toxic flechettes on wilds means that for each wild in the roll you can inflict bleed or poison so that's why he synergizes with Apocalypse because he inflicts stats effects. If he gets a crit, you can get, he can get placed within one of the target character. Well actually, it's not optional. If you roll a crit you must. That's less good. Uh, I don't like forced moves uh, in terms of like when you're doing something to someone. Avatar of Death, 3 dice, 7 dice, range 3 so that's the same basic stuff as angels but it has neurotoxin on wilds it gives stagger to the opponent if the target character has bleed or poison which is first attack can do and it does not have an activation token activated token it gains one instead of stagger that's really powerful he's got your basic charge on two wing shield on two which is his equivalent of vibranium shield chosen of apocalypse when this character makes an attack it may change one die result to a hit for each wild which is also good and believe it or not he can fly. So this is the wounded side he could become Angel if you use the Rebirth card. He gains one health on his wounded side, which normal Angel does not. Other than that, I believe he is identical, but keep in mind, if you use that tactics card, this transforms into this. He's rolling one extra die on his basic attack. He can inflict status effects with them. It has a forced place if you get a crit, but he, and his spender, 
instead of just doing a stun on a wild, it's doing a potential stagger or activated token. So that alone, charge for getting around, able to buff up his defense if he needs to, and he can turn more success or more like blanks and blocks into hits with Chosen of Apocalypse. So that is pretty cool, him becoming this. That's the cool mechanic. But by himself, this version just seems good and obviously, again, synergizes super well as a horseman of the apocalypse. Who knew? And oh yes, obviously he is in the list of becoming one of them. So yeah, Archangel, very cool. And I would always take that tactics card to change Angel into this, honestly. It, the only downside is taking up a tactics card slot. And that is going to do it for this unboxing. Thank you again to my channel sponsor for giving me the ability to pick these up. Again, not sponsored or anything, but they did give me store credit, which I used to pick these up. So that is how I was able to get them, and I am very thankful for that. Please go check them out and pick up something for yourself via my affiliate link. Either way, hopefully get these on the table soon. I'm planning on focusing getting Apocalypse done just because, again, I really like him. I can't guarantee I'll have any of these done, but from previous releases um, of potential horsemen like Scarlet Witch, Wolverine, Psylocke, a bunch of other mutants, I've got those covered. So really, I can feel the Apocalypse affiliation or the horsemen as soon as he's done. So I'll try and get him focused down and just get around to these two when possible because I'm going to want both of them done so that I can do that tactics card play. I want to see that in action for sure. Still got to find time for the Asgardians and other releases but you should be seeing some new characters on the table real soon. Either way, thank you for watching. Go check out the battle reports and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta for now.